<laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he knows me well. <laughs> Kidding. So <laughs> this week, not this week, a few weeks ago, when I, when I decided I was going to, to speak, I started thinking about what I might want to talk about. So I decided it would be really cool to talk about the meaning of life. And then, <clears throat> somewhere in the back of my mind, I heard this really loud laughter. <laughs> and, and, and then the words, right. <laughs> and I thought, well, no, that would be good. And this little voice says, no, I don't think so. So I'm thinking, well, fine, then you lead me to see what I'm going to talk about. So in the next few days, I just went along, and every time something happened, that little voice would go, there you go. And I'd think, oh. And then um, I would come upon another situation and see how people handle it. And that voice said, there you go. And I thought, really? OK. So I decided I would talk about what door you might be knocking on which sounds a little weird, but we have a person, when I walk in in the morning, if I say, good morning, the person will turn around and say, what's good about it? <laughs> yeah, it's like she's saying, this is my own personal pity party and you were not invited, so move on. I like that a lot with this particular person. And the last time it happened, it was like, Hello, there you go. Let's talk about that. So there we are. We're talking about that today. Um, Unity's third principle is we create our life experiences through our way of thinking. And I'm guessing that she doesn't know that yet. So um, we haven't had that talk yet either, so I'm not quite ready for that. Uh, let's, let's look at Matthew. Um, let's see. Seventh chapter, verses seven and eight, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The ones who seek, find. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So, which door are you knocking on? If you knock, it will be opened. Let's talk about doors for just a minute. What image comes to mind when you think of doors? Just conjure up a picture of a door in your mind. What I see when I think of a door is a big white door with five recessed panels and a really ornate doorknob and hinges because that's what we have in our house. It was built 135 years ago and that was the craftsmanship of the time. And I've seen a lot of those doors. We've painted a lot of those doors. We've worked on hinges on a lot of those doors. So those are the doors that come to mind when I think about doors. But you might see a glass door, or French doors, or sliding doors, something that's meaningful to you when you think of a door. I also visualize the unseen doors that allow spiritual energies to move between levels of consciousness. It's, um, it's interesting. We've lived, we've owned two houses. Both of them have been very old houses. This one is a very old house. It has a lot of character and a lot of characters in, in the house. Um, we have a north parlor that is very active. We um, have energies in there often. Many times they come and go, I believe, from that room. Um, wasn't long after we moved in that I heard someone singing in there, and my daughter said, what are you hearing? And I, my older daughter, and I said, well, I'm hearing these words. And she looked it up online and found out it was a hymn that was sung during funerals. And then Kim went to the Historic Society and looked up things about the house and found out there were funerals held in our house, which made sense after, we, after hearing that. Um, but I've been sitting in that room talking with friends and we've had a father show up just to let the person know he's okay. 
And we had a great aunt show up who was um, covered with butterflies. And it turns out she collected butterflies, not just you know, butterfly pictures and things, but really pressing butterflies. So it was a big thing. So that was a very good way to know that that was actually who that was. And once we had a Viking-like person show up who turns out was an ancestor of the person that I was sitting here talking to. You never know who's going to show up. We do have, um, we have a friend who, he was aware that we had movement in our house. We have one person who really comes often and walks through the house. And he was very adamant about watching the time because he knew that she came between 10, 30, and 11. And he was going to be out of that house before that time. It was really funny. We decided it must be uh, the original owner because she would walk through the living room and the south parlor and stop in our bedroom every time. We would hear the floor creak one step at a time as it went. And we decided that's where it was. And we would be many times in the bedroom when we'd hear the creaking come through the door and then stop right there. And it'd be kind of creepy if you let it be, I guess. But nothing ever happens. We need to consider the purpose of doors. A door is a moving structure that's used to either block off or allow access to whatever lies beyond. Consider the door that, that you were looking at, that you brought to mind. Think about where it leads. Think about where you are when you're looking at it. Is it somewhere that you want to be? Is it somewhere where you don't want to go? Doors serve a purpose. You know, we have easy doors, easy doors. Like in your house where you know you're going to open it up and then there's your utility room or you're going to open it up and wow, there's the bathroom. Or every time you open that door, it's going to be the same thing. There are doors at work that you walk through every time you go to work. You have to walk into the building. You walk through some doors. There are doors that you know well. Then there are public doors. Public doors that you know everybody goes through. There's hundreds of people that go through those doors. Those, those doors are OK. They're open. They're easy. You can go there. No questions. Then there are the harder doors, like the door to the principal's office when you're a kid. That's a little bit harder. Or the door that a loved one is behind in the hospital. Those are a little harder to go through. Or the door to the boardroom when you're going to be the person giving the high stakes presentation. Those doors are a little bit harder. But really, it's just the unknown, the unknown of what you're going to encounter when you get beyond that door that makes the anxiety. The door really doesn't have anything to do with it. But as I see it, we have two doors that we have access to at all times. And both of them are full of opportunities. It just depends on which opportunity you choose and which door you pick to open. Let's talk about door number one. Door number one. That's the negative one that seems to be like a revolving door. It's perpetually turning. And if we're not careful, we can get stuck in the door or end up right back where we started, giving us opportunity to try again. Or more often, giving us the opportunity to complain that no matter what we do or how hard we work, we never get ahead. The revolving door. Unfortunately, that's the door a lot of people feel like they, um, they're destined for. It's just a revolving door, spinning my wheels, just moving, never getting anywhere. Then there is door number two, the one that opens into the future you're hoping for. Opportunities lie through that door as well, the, the positive ones. Our third principle says our thoughts and beliefs shape our life experiences. And a quote most of us have heard many times is, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And it's all about the law of attraction. Well, even in the Old Testament of the Bible, Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as he thinks within himself, so he is. That verse is really talking about how someone may say something and appear 
in a way that they want you to see, but truly how they think is how they really are. Um, we, we have to learn to make the law of attraction work for us. And, and in doing that, we have to be aware of, of a few things, like our thoughts. We have to make them positive. I know we hear this all the time. We have to be aware of our feelings. We need to work on making those positive as well. And our opportunities. They can come and they can sit there or we can take advantage of them and make them positive. So our thoughts are words. It's the only way we would understand them. Charles Fillmore said, words are also seeds and when dropped into the invisible spiritual substance, they grow and bring forth after their kind. I think that's a very important thing he said. I'll read it again. Words are also seeds, and when dropped into the invisible spiritual substance, they grow and bring forth after their kind. And it doesn't take any more energy to think positive thoughts than it does to think negative thoughts. Not sure why we don't do that more. No more energy spent, but the results will certainly be different. It's very important. You know, the funny thing about um, a revolving door is that many times if you've ever gone through one, sometimes it moves because there are other people in it at the same time, and you don't know how quickly they're moving. So there's a bar there, and if you grab a hold of that bar so that you don't trip and fall down, sometimes you're holding on to it so long that you see your exit go by and you're still in it and you're going on around thinking, okay, I'm going to go next time. But as you're going around, more people are getting in and more people are pushing forward and it moves quickly and then you have your hand on the bar and there goes your exit again and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, and sometimes you end up back where you were and thinking, is there another door? I don't know if I can go through this one. That brief glimpse of where you want to go will come and go quickly if you don't step into it. You need to be careful that you don't let that go, go by. The, the key here is to let go when you see it coming. Let go. Let go and take a step. But holding on is security. And security is really good for, for people. The unknown is not always fun. Even though you go at it with a positive attitude, sometimes it's still a little scary. So letting go. There we are. How many times have we heard that? Especially if we listen to Frozen. Let go. <laughs> you have to let go of the negative thoughts. Think of them as like you get up in the morning for those of you who like to have coffee in the morning and you get your cup of coffee and it's steaming and this is your positive beginning, but you reach over and grab some ice cubes and drop ice cubes in because those are your negative thoughts. And before you know it, you, you don't have piping hot coffee. You have kind of a lukewarm puddle in, and it's not nice. You don't want that. Don't drop ice cubes. Don't pull in the negative. I always think of Saturday Night Live and, and the character Debbie Downer when I think of negative <laughs> because they put her in many situations and everybody's having fun and then she says something and it goes wah, 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 and then it brings the whole group down. That would be a negative. It doesn't take many negative thoughts to throw your energy off course and then you continue to have negative thoughts because thoughts in mind will produce after their kind. You know, it starts and it gets going. You have to be the one who says, okay, stop. Okay, stop, I'm done. You have to let them go. And I understand it's easier said than done, but it can be done. That's the good part. So how do we get to door number two? Very important word, affirmation. Consider affirmation. Charles Fillmore said, prayer is an affirmation of truth that eternally exists, but which has not yet come to consciousness. It comes into consciousness 
not by supplication, which would mean to request or appeal, but by affirmation. Do not supplicate or, or beg God to give you what you need, but get still and listen and think. Think about the inexhaustible resources of infinite mind, its presence in all its fullness, and its constant readiness to manifest itself for you when its laws are complied with. Affirm. Affirm the infinite good. It helps you find the good in situations that might be challenging. You can find it. It's there. Even if the fact is that you just accept that that happened and you go on and you're not going to allow it to have a negative effect on your mind or on you. Be grateful. In advance, be grateful. Know in advance that things are going to happen because you know that you have full access. Full access to positive thought through the Christ within you and the positive opportunities that will follow. Affirm, be grateful, and open. Open yourself to receive what God has waiting for you. You can do all of these things, but if you're not open, the chances will not be there. I have a quote to read you from um, Eric Butterworth. He wrote, The purpose of prayer is not to change God or to remind God of some need perhaps overlooked. The purpose of prayer is to change us, to synchronize our consciousness with the source of all that is available. We must open ourselves to receive all the universe might give. And remember, another one of the principles say that it's not enough for us to know these things, but we must also live them. We have to understand that we can read, we can hear, we can be told, and we can know. But if that's all we do, and that's where we leave it, we're still in the same place we started. Back a, a while ago, when Kim and I were um, students at Manhattan Christian College, one of our professors said something that I've never forgotten. He was talking with us as a group. And um, it was talking about opportunity. And there was a bit of a skeptic saying, yeah, we know God is out there. We know God is, is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And we know all of that. But why is God not giving us all the opportunities that we think we deserve? And he, he turned and he said, remember, God can't steer a parked car. You've got to get up and move. So I've always kept that in mind when I'm thinking, okay, here I am, I'm waiting. Well, waiting isn't going to get it. You have to get up and move. You have to steer your car. Well, you drive it, I suppose God will steer it. <laughs> um, I, I did a lot of reading over the last couple of weeks about things when I realized now I'm going to have to be talking about this topic, which is a good topic, and I've enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot. Um, but another thing that I read that Charles Fillmore said was, you must first enter into the understanding that God, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omnis om omniscient is the source. And you have to remember that you can draw on this source without limit. That is big. You feel like you're always talking or always praying for something or, or wondering. And you think, well, okay, here I am again. But that's okay. That's okay. Totally refillable. Constantly. Do that. Ask. And you shall receive. So which door are you knocking on? Is it door number one? A negative revolving door that doesn't seem to let you get ahead? Or door number two, where positive thoughts and affirmations will lead you forward? Jesus did say, knock, and the door will be open to you. Thank you.